All right, so today's video is going to be over this rifle right here. It is not going to be a review. It is simply going to be an accuracy test. We're gonna be testing a bunch of factory ammo. We've got uh, 10 different kinds of ammo or something like that. And we're just gonna be doing three shot groups. Um, I'm gonna keep the round count fairly small uh, for a number of reasons. One, it's really hot outside right now. This mat is actually kind of burning me. So it's pretty unpleasant to lay on and it's gonna get hotter today and uh, ammo is expensive and all the other excuses that I can make up, which is why we should thank our ammo sponsor today, which is me, so be grateful. Um, I don't have anybody sponsoring me, so I'm just buying all this stuff out of pocket. So anyway, um, if you guys have anything in particular you want me to try and test, by all means, send me a, uh, send me a suggestion. But I will leave the description, or in the description, I will leave the information on the rifle, the optic and whatnot. Um, we really don't have this thing outfitted with anything crazy. I just basically put a Magpul bipod on here, some Weaver Grand Slam rings and an Athlon 3 to 12 with the mill dot. Uh, their Talos line scope, and I just left the same muzzle device that came from the factory. The only thing that I've done to the gun was I just basically took everything apart, retorqued it with blue Loctite. I like to use a mild thread locker on pretty much everything and then um, just put it all together. I did kind of do a rough side in already, which is partly why there's one shot on paper, and that is the same ammo that we're gonna use here, but I did adjust the scope, so it will probably shift the point of impact slightly. Now, we're gonna be starting with the Sierra 223 Remington 55 grain Prairie Enemy, which is their Blitz King bullet. I don't know if you guys can see the, the box there. Probably doesn't help that I'm shaking because I am properly caffeinated. But we're gonna go ahead and start with that. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and move up to the uh, top right diamond, or top left, excuse me. Um, we are shooting at about 80 yards. I can't quite get back to 100 right now. And I am. Uh, I apologize for the fact that the target is kind of dimly lit. Um, it is broad daylight, but it's kind of back in the trees because otherwise if I put it in the sunlight, it would be about 60 yards. And I know that kind of irritates people for some reason. So we're gonna go ahead and get to shooting here. We got three rounds of the Sierra 55 grain Blitz Kings factory loaded prairie enemy line by sierra and we're gonna go ahead and shoot for that top left diamond and just start putting rounds on paper here all right so that was the Sierra 55s. Kind of debating on what order I want to shoot these in. Because there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. But I've been debating on whether or not I want to go like up and down and grain weight. And I just, I don't know. I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to jump straight to the Federal. Sierra Match Kings, the 69 grain Sierra Match King gold medal load that they have, or federal premium gold medal. And uh, we'll just jump into that and see how those do because I've been really curious to see how the uh, the match style bullets, like the hollow point boat tail um, 69 grain and 77 grain stuff do. So we're just gonna go ahead and do those first because I am very curious. We'll do three rounds of those and then we'll probably go to the 73s or the 77s or do vice versa and then we'll go from there so moving on to the 69 green sierra match king federal gold medal match ammunition we're going to be shooting for the top of the center diamond on this one So I'm assuming one of those went in the same hole because uh, I can't actually see a third shot, but it kind of looks like that bottom one might be just a little more ragged. So that was actually a pretty darn good group. Not that that first one was bad, but that was definitely a good one. So next up is the 77 grain Federal Premium Gold Medal Match uh, Sierra Match King. It's a mouthful. It's a 77 grain stuff. How's that sound? All right, we are shooting for the top right diamond on this one. I forgot to cover the hole on that first target, but that's okay. We'll just keep forgetting. All 
Well, the point of impact was pretty far off from everything else we've been shooting so far, so that's kind of interesting. Well, that one was pretty lackluster, actually. And then it had a weird POI shift, too. So, I don't really know what was going on there, but um, the 69 Grinner shot very well. It may have to do with uh, twist rate, too. I don't know. I don't actually even really know off the top of my head what the twist rate is on this gun. I literally just bought it this week, and uh, I have not done any shooting with it until pretty much today so um this is all learning experience for both of us where did my brass go guys you you saw the video where'd it go i'm not i don't see it all right next up we have the federal premium 73 grain burger open tip match ammo it's all the also their gold medal line and uh this should be right smack dab in between the 69 and the 77 greener obviously if you can you know do basic math and um we're gonna go for the left corner of the center diamond. So just on the left side of the center of the target. So I think there was two up on the top hole and then one down low. It's really hard to see. Um, I hope you guys can see this target okay because I'm actually kind of having a, I'm struggling a little bit through the scope here. Um, partly because these things are, I get sweat all over them. But anyway, that was actually a pretty good group. So 73s and the 69s did pretty good. 77s did not do good. And the point of impact on the 77s changed quite a bit too, which kind of had me wondering right out of the gate. But uh, we're going to basically be shooting, aside from I think one Barnes load, the rest of these are gonna be uh, quite a bit lighter compared to these, because these were really the only heavy for caliber bullets that I had. And I, th I think this is a one and eight twist. I really don't know. It might be a one and nine or something completely different. I need to, actually go back and do my research. I think I mentioned it before, but this is the Ruger American Predator model. It's their Gen 2. Um, this is the newest one that um, has come out at the time of recording this video, but I think they're supposed to have three models, one with a 16 inch barrel, a 20 inch barrel, and a 22 inch barrel. We went with the 22 inch barrel because it seemed like that's what most people were looking to get information on. So that's why we ended up with this one. Um, if you guys want to see any particular kind of test done or ammo tested or something, just drop a comment, please, because that's the easiest way for me to know. But as far as this particular test goes, the next thing we are going to shoot is going to be the Nosler 55 grain Varmageddon's. So that's their flat base tipped bullet. It's a lot like the 55 grain VMAX. There is no boat tail. So we've shot these before and had um, good-ish results, not like super amazing groups but um good enough to kill coyotes and groundhogs and stuff like that so we will throw three of these critters in there and we're going to aim for that center diamond i kind of forgot to cover up that first shot from the side end or just the verification that it was somewhat sighted in so i apologize because this might land right in the same little area but um theoretically it should be a little bit to the left so hopefully it doesn't interfere with it but we are going to Aim for the center of the target and see what we get with the Nosler 55 grainers. like it was a pretty good group too um i'm kind of having a hard time seeing the shots that are in the red when they're on the white it's a lot easier to see them but in the red it's a little a little tougher but it looked like it was a 
not too shabby. So we're going to throw the barrel cool in there yet again, run down to the target. I am going to try to remember to tape that little hole just because it's kind of irritating me that we've been forgetting every time. <laughs> I'm gonna give the, the barrel a minute to cool off. It's getting pretty toasty and then we'll uh, give the cameras a break and we'll come back to it. Okay, next up we have the Hornady Varmin Express 223 55 grain loading. If you can see that, probably not. Um, I don't know, they may have changed their packaging on this. So a lot of this stuff probably doesn't even look the same that it has in the past, especially Hornady. They like to change their packaging all the time. So uh, people go into the store to buy something and can't find it because the package is not the same color as it used to be, which is kind of annoying. Um, we are going for the right side of the center diamond. Still trending to the left, it seems like, at least with the lighter bullets and the heavier ones. Um, we're gonna put three of these. These are the flat base bullets, so these don't have a boat tail either. It's just their straight uh, 55 grain VMAX. We're gonna do the 53 grain VMAX next, which is I think a super performance loading, and that one does have a slight boat tail on it. That one seemed like it had a lot of stringing on it. It's like a straight line, so I was actually a little disappointed in that one because I was hoping that one would do quite a bit better than that. We are going to move straight into the 53 grain VMAX from Hornady in their Superformance line. These right here, which actually, not this load, but this bullet is what I load more than anything for coyote and like varmint hunting just in general, really. But uh, I absolutely love the 53 grain VMAX for predator or just varmint shooting because one, the bullet performance, terminal performance wise, does an excellent job. But two, um, they usually are pretty darn accurate in the guns that I've tested them in. So we will see if I'm gonna make myself a liar here. The gun is still fairly warm. Um, I can only fight the heat so much on a day like today. So we're doing the best we can. But uh, this one, we're just gonna jump right into it. Um, I did let the barrel cool down for a little while after that prior group. So the 53 grain VMAX is going to go on the bottom left diamond. And we're gonna put three shots on target here. Well, from here, it looks like all three of those went into like one hole. but you guys can see better than I can, I'm hoping. <laughs> so I think that was a really good group, but I could be wrong. But to me, it looks like they all, maybe not one hole, but two side by side, or touching rather, but still a very, very good group. If I'm looking at that right. I mean, even though it's 80 yards, not quite 100, that's still excellent. Um, the next one we're gonna do is gonna be the Winchester 55 grain Varmint X load. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, I have a very weird relationship with Winchester, not as a company, but just as like a product line, because it seems like every time I look at this white box crap, I'm like expecting it to shoot like crap. And then half the time, it impresses the heck out of me. Like it'll shoot just stupid good for cheap ammo. And I, I'm not saying it's all cheap, but like, I'm just saying I've seen some wicked good performance out of this. And I am not advocating for Winchester at all. Um, like I said, I've, <laughs> I mean, I've seen some really poor stuff come out of Winchester. And then I've seen some stuff that just made me drop my jaw just in amazement of how good it shot. So you, you kind of never know what you're gonna get. I'm not saying their quality controls crap, I'm just, in my limited experience, um, it's kind of like a box of chocolates. You just never know what you're gonna get. So I'm curious <laughs> to see how these are gonna shoot. Um, it doesn't specify like a different brand of bullet for this loading. It looks a lot like a Nosler bullet 
It may very well be a Nosler bullet. Winchester might actually make the bullet. I really don't know, but it's just their Varmin X line, uh, 55 grain. It looks like a flat base on the picture, but it doesn't specify as far as I can tell. So that's what we're gonna be shooting next. This one's gonna go on the bottom center of the diamond. So the four corners, it's gonna go on the bottom corner of the center diamond, which is just above the GoPro. So as always, wish us luck. and. Uh, May the force be with the GoPro. It's gonna need it. Really not bad. Um, Especially considering we just did like three groups in a row and didn't really let the barrel cool off. I am gonna let it cool off before these last couple groups. I might shoot one extra group of just some cheap hand-loaded ammo I have. I'm probably not going to. Um, this thing's been getting pretty dang hot as is. I mean, it's, it's. I can't really keep my hand on there. It's getting pretty hot. Um, but so far everything has shot relatively well uh, with the exception of like the 77 grain stuff kind of shot crappy and that may be um, a twist rate thing. I don't really know. I need to look into the specs on this gun a little bit more and even then maybe it just didn't like that load. I've seen some barrels that the twist rate shouldn't have stabilized certain bullets and they shot exceptional. So you just, you kind of never know in all honesty. I mean, you can look at stuff on paper all day long, but as far as performance downrange, um, sometimes things will surprise you kind of like the Winchester ammo. Sometimes it's surprised me on numerous occasions. So we're gonna stick the barrel cooler in here. Um, the next group that we're going to shoot is gonna be the 55 grain TSX from Barnes. Now, I'm gonna be totally up front. Uh, I'm gonna shoot probably this one at the bottom right, tri or uh, diamond rather. And then I'm gonna shoot the 70 grain TSX probably just at the middle of the target because I have seen those destabilize really bad in the past or even not destabilize but just have extremely poor accuracy and I'm not trying to uh, trash barns. It was just out of that specific box of ammo. Um, I had pretty sketchy accuracy when it's, you know, in relation to the fact or in regards to the fact that we're shooting over a camera that I really don't want to like explode. Um, these I trust a little bit more than I do the 70s, so we're gonna shoot these at a target kind of by itself, and then the last one, we're probably just gonna try to get them on paper. <laughs> and they might shoot great out of this gun, I don't know, but uh, based on how the 77 shot, I don't really wanna take any chances just because I've, I've seen some pretty large groups, but I am rambling, so I'm gonna stick the barrel cooler in here. We're going to give the gun, the cameras a break. Um, I'm probably gonna take another drink of coffee because clearly I'm not shaky enough, and then uh, we'll keep going. Ooh, that sounds sad. Maybe we're not gonna use the barrel cooler. You need a new battery, don't you, buddy? Yes, you do. Oh, wow, that's hot. Yes. Oh, wow. Golly, that's like, that burns. Okay, guys, we're going to be shooting two more groups and maybe a bonus group, but this is the 55 grain TSX by Barnes. So yeah, that wasn't a good group. Um, kind of like what I was saying earlier, I didn't expect them to shoot that great. Um, not that these are gonna shoot bad in every gun. I actually like Barnes bullets um, quite a bit. I've had good luck with them on game. I have not done any like long range shooting realistically with them. Um, the farthest I think I've ever actually literally shot a Barnes bullet is probably 360 yards. That's where we can shoot out here. That's the, the longest distance that we can shoot on this property. Um, so my experience with them for long range or long range hunting or whatever you want to say is, is relatively limited. But uh, as far as their loaded ammunition in 223 specifically, I have seen um, not the best accuracy. The 55s have shot better than the 70s, which we're gonna shoot next. 
This is their same load essentially, but it's their 70 grain TSX, which is a heavy bullet. I mean, it's a really heavy bullet as far as 223 goes because it's an all copper projectile. And so even though it's a 70 grain projectile, um, as far as all copper goes, it's if it was a cup and core lead bullet, as far as its size or length, it would be much heavier. Um, I can't give you an exact number because I don't really know what that ratio turns into, but um, I don't expect them to shoot all that great. So we're gonna aim for like the upper portion of the target probably for the top of the center diamond and just see what happens because I've seen these spread pretty bad. But again, I'm not trying to knock barns. I don't ever really like to just dog on a company unless they really deserve it. Um, but these two boxes of ammo, I've shot through a handful of guns and they just, they haven't, well, no, not this. I guess we did have a couple because I've only shot three out of this one. So they're all from the same lot though. Either way, we're gonna shoot them and see what happens. They might shoot fantastic, you never know. But we're gonna go ahead and, golly, this mat is so hot, it's unreal. Um, we're gonna go for the top of the center target. I'm probably gonna move the point of impact to the right just a little bit and hoping that we can kind of stay away from some of the other groups, but two clicks ain't much. And if it is a big group, it ain't gonna matter that much. But you guys will still be able to see what happens either way, so. Here goes nothing. Hmm, well that did not hit where I was wanting it to, so well, we'll just keep shooting. It's right in there with that other group. I'm sorry guys, I probably should have done more to avoid that, but you already saw what it shot, so it's not like you don't know. Well, compared to the last time I shot this ammo, that actually wasn't that bad. I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, shoot a couple more groups, or not a couple more groups, I'm gonna shoot um, a few more rounds with that hand-loaded hand stuff that I have. It's nothing special, it's actually just generic 50 grain bullets that I got on Gunbroker years ago. I don't even know who makes them, um, but I'm just gonna shoot five out of this thing and just see how they do out of my own curiosity. And uh, whether you guys wanna stick around for that is up to you. I don't even know what powder I loaded these with. I think it was CFE 223, but I'm really not sure. Might've been DLC 2. It was some kind of a ball powder or not a extruded powder. I know that. We're gonna go for that top right diamond. Since we didn't have a great group up there anyway, we'll just go for that. At this point, I'm just kind of shooting for fun here. See how quickly you can put these on here. I don't think that was the worst group that we shot today. Okay, so that is the first video that I am doing on the Ruger American Predator Gen 2 with the 22 inch barrel on it in 223 Remington. So again, if you guys have any suggestions as to what you would like to see tested in this rifle or some kind of configuration, whatever it is, um, please leave a comment so that I kind of know where to go forward with stuff like this because I, I can only do so many polls or figure out exactly what you guys are wanting to see. I know this is a product that a lot of people are looking at right now, so I tried to get one as quick as I could just so that I could do a video on it. But as far as knowing what ammo you guys want to see or whatever, um, hand loads or factory ammo, it's kind of hard for me to know that. So please drop a comment. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, read the description if you want to know the specs on the rifle and the scope and all that jazz. And um, check out the links in the description as well for like our website and other social media platforms, please. With that being said, y'all stay risen, take care, and we'll hopefully see you in the next video.